Hello and welcome to Trash Park. This is Bardwaj and we are riding India's first electric performance motorcycle. That's the Ultraviolet F77 here in Bangalore. And we are going to tell you everything you need to know about this performance two-wheeler in this video. Let's get started. So, about the Ultraviolet F77, obviously you guys are in the know and if you are planning to buy an electric two-wheeler, you would have definitely heard about this name. Uh, it has been under development for six years and Ultraviolet has taken their time to give a very perfect and near perfect product is what I can say. On that note, if you are caught up with the launch highlights of this motorcycle, let me brief you a little bit before I get on to the motorcycle itself. Uh, this comes in three variants. There's standard, there's recon, which is what is with us right now. And there's also a top spec limited edition one that is limited to 77 units. It's called the limited. Now the prices range between 3.8 lakh for the standard model and the recon model details at 4.5 lakh and 5.5 lakh for the limited edition one. So, Prices out of the way and the variants out of the way, let us talk about the colors right now. What you see here is the red devil, I can say. It's called as the laser. Absolutely looks beautiful and wonderful as well. With that, there are two more colors. That's called the A-Strike and the Shadow. Shadow is full of black and resembles a jet fighter look. And uh, Airstrike also uh, inspires its color uh, from the fighter planes that we are so used to seeing. So all the colors look very fantastic and very good as well. So that's about the colors and the variants and the pricing. So now get on to the design as well. Up front, when you see the F77's design, you can see all the aerodynamic bits coming into the play with the motorcycle, be it at the forks or even at the tank or even at the fairing as well or even the rear cowl everything is sculpted to let the air slip through the motorcycle not chime anywhere even the winglets that you see right there that happens to be a aerodynamic element where it channels the airflow to the motor to keep it cool also it is a functional element because it is a crash guard as well for this motorcycle which helps in crash protection and saving the rider's knees and even on the panels of this motorcycle. Now if you see on the side profile what you see here, it absolutely looks beautiful, a very jet fighter inspired design is what I can say. Right from up front you get this uh, headlight that is contoured in shape and gets DRLs uh, along with the LED lighting uh, for high beam and low beam. Also the front fender what you see is in line and in seam with the uh, aerodynamic element for the fork covers right here and coming to the back even the tank what you see here obviously this is not a fuel tank but there is some charging module placed under this and there's no storage apart from that uh, the charging module you can see is up right here you can open the flap and you can plug it in and also there are a good amount of grip pads right here for the rider to tuck their knee in and grip the motorcycle with their thighs and also you can see it's a well-rounded package and the fit and finish of this motorcycle is absolutely brilliant uh, that six years of development is what can be seen throughout this motorcycle with its fit and finish and the design right here and also if you noticed a keen eyed viewer will also notice that there are no bolts right here it is for a seamless design it is a very bolt on uh, snap on kit so they have hidden they have managed to hide all the bolts or nuts that is required to fasten the body panels on this motorcycle good job ultraviolet there now coming to the rear section uh, again you get sculpted body panels right here also you get integrated grab rail for the pillion rider uh, that is tucked under the rear seat panel or the rear cowl and the tail lamp what you see here the rear tail lamp absolutely looks fantastic it also draws inspiration from the uh, jet fighters that you see here and the flexi completes the look of the rear section there's no tire hugger though but we are not complaining because the tire the tread pattern looks absolutely wonderful now these are new uh, tires from mrf that is specifically uh, made its debut on this motorcycle we will uh, be seeing these uh, tires on other motorcycles probably in the future and you get a f77 badging right here and the name the laser the color name is also uh, badged etched on the rear cowl right here on the left side of the panel and uh, so that's about the design of the motorcycle also one more design element i want to highlight is if you can see the swing arm is 
absolutely uh, you know looks very good there is a silver swing arm and also black swing arm uh, depending on the color but the design of it apart from being a functional element it aesthetically looks good and that is the theme of this motorcycle is what i feel apart from being functional it also has to look aesthetically good is what uh, ultraviolet has aimed for in the f77 and they i think have managed to pull it off Now let's get on to the features of the motorcycle. Now the biggest feature or uh, the biggest feature element is what I can say is the 5 inch TFT display that's for the instrument cluster. Uh, now this is not a touch screen unit like you found on most TVs. Uh, I'm glad about that. Uh, it's a conventional unit and can be controlled via all the switch gear that's present on the handlebar. I'll come to that in a bit. But you get to see a very good looking instrument cluster. Tad bit small though. I would have uh, liked a even a bigger screen but the bezels sort of overpower the display that you see right here now with that uh, you get to choose a lot of features you get to control a lot of features activating bluetooth uh, selecting your region mode selecting your abs mode and selecting your uh, modes for the ride as well all these can be controlled via this particular console right here and it offers a ton of information and it is also eSIM embedded so you have onboard navigation which you can uh, send it through your phone application yes this motorcycle like all other EVs can be connected to the uh, cell phone and uh, that is capable for this motorcycle as well. Now even about talking about the switchgear quality, it is very tactile and easy to use. Uh, there's no, uh, no, it's a no brainer and they've kept it very conventional. Uh, even the hazard switch and also the pass switch are right there. It's very conventional like you find on other uh, two-wheeler motorcycles uh, with the IC engine uh, layout. Now with that, uh, those are all the highlighting features. Apart from that, as I mentioned earlier, this is where you charge and you also have good uh, highlights like, you know, it's since it's a made in India product and you have an Indian flag placed on the handlebar as well uh, and looks very cool. And even the ultra wireless logo is placed on the handlebar that adds to the aesthetic value as well. And uh, finally, the keyhole is present uh, right before uh, the charging socket and uh, not placed on the handlebar itself. So again, uh, it's an EV, but still you get a key for uh, operating, uh, for starting the bike conventionally. It's that conventional on the F77. So uh, with that, there is one more feature uh, which will help uh, manage your brakes on the motorcycle because it gets an adjustable lever right here. It has five steps of adjustability and with that you get a good reach of your lever to brake, uh, to do a hard braking, uh, especially if you're on a track like this. So on that note, those are all the features. So let's now get onto the specs of the motorcycle before I tell you how it is to ride on track and also in the real world condition because I've ridden in both. Talking about the specs, this now gets a largest battery pack that has been put onto a two-wheeler in the Indian market. Yes, it's a 10.3 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, what is uh, so fascinating about this is the second largest battery pack in India to be put on a two-wheeler is also of the ultraviolet F77. On the standard model, it is offered with a 7.1 kilowatt hour battery pack. So, uh, the standard model gets the lower one and the recon and the limited gets the top spec battery pack that's the 10.3 kilowatt hour. So, with that battery pack out of the way, let's talk about the motor. So, the motor on the recon produces 29 uh, kilowatt of uh, peak power and 95 newton meters of peak torque. With that, the acceleration times uh, lie somewhere between uh, 8 seconds for 0 to 100 and not 0 to 60. Yes, 0 to 100 is dealt within 8 seconds and the top speed uh, on this recon model had to be limited to 147, but I'm sure it can travel even more uh, if the limiter is off. So uh, that's the 147 uh, kmph top speed on the F77 in terms of performance. Now finally getting on to the range and charging time. Uh, range is something very fascinating on this motorcycle because whenever you think about electric two-wheelers, you often think about a range somewhere lying between 120 to 150 km per hour, but Ultraviolet has doubled it. Yes, they have doubled it because the IDC range of this is 307 km uh, per charge. Now that is a IDC range and I was not able to test it real time uh, because I'll have to travel for longer distances on uh, to test that. But, however, with my experience, I can definitely tell that the real world range will lie somewhere between 260 to 270 kilometers uh, per charge. And it also has three levels of region, which will put back 10%, around 10% of charge uh, for uh, every 100% if you use it in high or even medium mode in your rides. So with that, you're getting a very practical range on this motorcycle around uh, 260, 270 kilometers, which will enable you to do 
inter city traveling uh, and if you charge your trips as well you can go even further and it does not take much you get a 1.3 kilowatt charger and a 3 kilowatt booster charger with 1.3 kilowatt charger you can charge this motorcycle up by within 8 hours that is 0 to 100% and if you use a booster charger you can charge it up uh, with fast charging like 0 to 80% in just 2 hours and uh, this also supports 7 kilowatt uh, charging as well however that is yet to come from uh, you know ultraviolet they will be uh, you know placing some uh, fast charging station super fast charging station where you'll be able to juice up this motorcycle even better but for now if you have to juice up uh, quickly on this motorcycle you can use those booster chargers which is a 3 kilowatt charger which will uh, juice up this motorcycle to 80 percent in two hours so that's about the charging and battery pack now that is over let us talk about the motorcycle as to how it uh, rides speaking about the performance first it gets three ride modes that's the glide uh, combat and ballistic the difference between glide and combat is good uh, but not to that extent because roll-on acceleration feels almost similar uh, glide a little bit uh, subtle and combat a little bit more power obviously but the difference is little minimal is what i feel but the name ballistic does justice on this motorcycle because it is really fast it has got that kickback acceleration that you would re need uh, especially on standstill and also you will get that same kickback feeling with the roll-on acceleration as well that is something uh, i've not seen on evs uh, till date uh, especially on two-wheelers uh, so on that note the ballistic is something that you'll have to be very careful about uh, when you buy this motorcycle and if you go for a test ride as well uh, but for city conditions combat will definitely help you in uh, quick overtakes and also it will also help you in ease of city maneuvering as well now uh, that is about it in terms of uh, performance and the, how the acceleration of the motorcycle is it is absolutely instant and you will get that instant torque especially in that ballistic mode it is insane is what i can tell uh, with that let us go to the dynamics of the motorcycle that's the suspension and the braking and also the rider triangle as well the rider doesn't sit very upright they lean a bit which is the case for all the sport motorcycles if you see however what i would tell you is it is not so aggressive you would not have to lean so much and also you have a good amount of support coming from the tank to hold your gut in and also you get good amount of thigh support as well to grip the bike uh, with the tank panels uh, right there in that sense it is not so aggressive it is easily manageable for day-to-day uh, -day rides and also if you want to go for a long trip it can be done on this motorcycle as well however you would need a little bit more uh, frequent stop is what i feel especially with the pillion rider uh, you would definitely need it uh, speaking of that let us come to the seats if you see the seat here it is properly angled and it is properly channeled so that you will not have to spread your legs too much to reach the ground so uh, on that note a shorter rider or a taller rider will definitely uh, be easy with it and uh, with that the seat height is around 800 mm which is 30 mm lesser than the duke 390 and it also gets a 160 mm ground clearance so ground clearance is not compromised even though it gets a very low seat height so with that sitting pillion uh, as is with all these motorcycles they will need more frequent stop than the rider uh, yes it is a little bit large but uh, larger rider <clears throat> such as me will need definitely some uh, breaks between longer journeys on that note it is supportive uh, again it's a very short ride i will have to ride it a little bit and then tell you how it is uh, finally coming to the suspension the front gets a usd uh, forks and the rear get a monosock suspension both from gabriel yes it's from gabriel and uh, they act well both gets adjustability for preload you can adjust it as per uh, your uh, rider uh, preference and with that the suspension is uh, uh, set up slightly towards the uh, stiffer side because to help with managing this curb weight of 207 uh, kilos on this motorcycle uh, on that note i would like to point out one thing is that uh, ultraviolet has done very beautifully they have managed to keep the weight in the middle of the motorcycle and inside the frame so that there is no unladen mass outside the motorcycle which will tip it over or try to balance it on one foot on that note it's a very balanced motorcycle uh, the 200 kilogram odd weight what you see on this motorcycle is really really not felt even on standing uh, while it's standing or to lift the motorcycle or even while riding as well it becomes very easy the bike is very nimble thanks to the suspension setup and the chassis setup that they have done it's very good and uh, when i was riding around the corners i could easily chuck it and shift 
between both the slaloms that you see on this uh, track right here and I could easily uh, you know take the corners aggressively and the bike supported me very well on that note I would really say it's set up beautifully for the track and also for the day-to-day -day use that you would require from this motorcycle now finally coming to the braking it gets a 320 mm disc brake at the front and a 230 mm rotor at the rear uh, the brake again uh, what you see right here is adjustable lever now there's little bit a uh, lack of an initial bite that is fine i believe you'll have to really load it and then squeeze it once you do that you will get amazing performance from this uh, disc right here again those are from uh, bybrae and uh, they definitely perform very well and uh, i could stop this motorcycle with my weight on this and the weight of the motorcycle very shortly and in this track this track being very short it uh, supported the brake support and it not fade off uh, so in terms of braking it is very good and uh, it's on point to handle this uh, motorcycle and the power that is being put out by this motorcycle even in ballistic mode that is also this gets a dual channel abs where you can uh, disable the rear uh, tire abs on it and you can have some fun while sliding or if you want to take some off-road you can definitely take the bike and slide it around on that note that is how the ultraviolet f77 rides now again as i mentioned i have ridden it on city streets and also on the track both fared out very well i was expecting this bike to uh, not behave and it surprised me very well because it uh, weighs north of 200 kilos uh, ultraviolet have managed to uh, set up this bike in terms of dynamics very well i am very happy with it and uh, certainly if you want to take this bike on tracks you can do so especially with that mode and the braking that is there on this motorcycle so that was our take of the india's most powerful electric motorcycle that's the ultraviolet f77 this is priced at 3.8 lakh I mean starting at 3.8 lakh and goes all the way up to 5.5 uh, lakh for the limited edition model. Uh, what I feel is this is still at a very nascent stage. I mean the segment is at a very nascent stage and uh, you would feel that you know the value proposition might be off a little bit but that is only until you get on this motorcycle. Once you get on this motorcycle you will know why that costing has been done and why it is it can be justified especially for the range that you're getting and the dynamics that you're getting and finally the performance that you're getting from the ultraviolet f77 this is bharadwaj and that is the ultraviolet f77 signing off see you in the next one